Kia ora team, welcome to this video on question 4 of the 2019 Skull Calc exam. First question is about um, lambing season in New Zealand and all I can say there is you were in for a treat. Hopefully you didn't cringe there too much. Um, and the second question is a pretty intense differential equation which involves uh, methods covered in Cambridge Mathematics um, but with exposure to them are not too nasty. They just involve quite a few steps. Alright, so the first question about use, if you haven't got my joke before. Um, it's an unfamiliar integral, uh, but if we substitute the stuff, the, all the information into it, it's not too bad except for the algebra involved. So we want to do this in as few steps as possible by being clever about how we expand or don't expand things. Alrighty, so question A. We've got some formula T equals, we don't really need to get our hand around what it's actually doing. Um, we've got P of M is the probability one of the twins will be male. Now, this question here is worded kind of uh, a little bit confusing. So. I remember in 2019, a few of my students being a bit confused um, coming out of the exam because they had some statistics knowledge that um, told them that if you have two two lambs being born, so we get like lamb one and lamb two, then there's some probability that um, a twin is male, so I don't know, call that P, as male and assuming independence between the um, two lambs and, and their birth uh, and what, what sex they are so the probability of two two males being born is p squared and the two females being born is one minus p squared Uh, the question refers to this as P of M and P of F all squared. Um, so that would be P of M and this is P of F. But the way that the question's worded, the probability that one of the twins will be male sounds like they're referring to this branch and that branch. A better wording of this question would be P of M is the probability that a lamb being born is male. Um, and yeah, not one of the twins, but the probability of a single lamb being a male. Alrighty, but um, if you didn't get tripped up by that, all you need to know for the, for the integral is that the P of F, the probability that a lamb is female, is one minus the probability of male, because they only give us the probability of male here we have to work out the probability of female is 1 minus this. Assuming that there's no uh, lambs that we can't determine the sex of them. So either male or female. Okay, so we sub that into this formula. Tp is just some constant. Um, we're looking over a finite time interval. So we've got this probability or this mean probability 1 over tp integral between 0 and tp of the probability of being male squared plus the probability of being female squared dt okay and there's squiggly brackets involved there around the whole expression because we're integrating both of those terms Probability of male, A minus A minus B over TP, all times T. So that's being squared. And we've got a 1 minus, 1 minus A plus A minus B over TP times T. And integrating that between 0 and TP. T equals the whole way down, let's just get equals dt. 
Okay, let's just check if we've got everything correct before we move into a bit more of a mess. A minus A minus B over T P times T one minus A plus. Yep, cool, I'm happy with that. Now we could expand this all out. Um the first term's not bad, it's just there's four things when you expand it. The second term is three terms, although you could group this part together and then go one minus a squared, that squared, and then two lots of the cross terms. Um however if you realise that the inner functions here, because a, b and tp are all constants, these inner functions here are, like, are both linear functions. So when we anti-diff them, like for example, um, in an NCA achieved problem, you might have 2x minus 3 to the power of 4 um, integrated, and to do that you just go 2x minus 3 to the 5 over 5, and then also divide by the 2. So if the inner function is a linear function, then the integral here is actually pretty easy to do. We don't need to expand it. Because the inner function is linear, we can just go um, a minus the stuff cubed all over 3. But we also have to divide by the derivative of that, which is... Get rid of this highlighting. We need to divide by this term here. Oh, and the minus. That's the derivative of the linear function. So we've got that minus a minus b is the same as b minus a. Okay, so that's what we're dividing by there. And the second term, likewise, we can just leave it factorized. Leave it in brackets. cubed over 3, and then we just divide by this term here, the derivative of that linear function. And we're integrating, the, um, we've integrated between 0 and tp, they're our limits. Okay, so now we just need to show that this comes out to be that expression um, that's given to us, and it's there's going to be a few algebraic steps to get it into the right format. TP, when we sub TP in, we're subbing it into the T value because we've integrated with respect to time. So TP um, goes into, into here and into there. But 1 over TP. I'm going to pull a 3 out. We've got a 3 in both those denominators. And I'm also going to pull a b minus a over tp out of the denominator. The tp's cancel there. And because I pulled out b minus a over tp, um, the term in the middle becomes a minus because it, it was a minus b over tp. Switch, to, switch that round. Okay. So before I substitute in, I've just tidied it up a little bit. Alrighty, now I'm subbing in the TP and the zero. TP goes in for where there's uh, the T. So when I do that, the first time the TPs cancel. Okay, that, that cancels with that. And so I get um, A minus A minus B, which is plus B. So I get B cubed. And I put TP into the second bracket. The TPs cancel again. I get 1 minus A plus A minus B. So I get 1 minus b all cubed. Okay, and then I put 0 in for the expressions. You've got to be careful with this because we're definite integral. We've put the top limit in, then we subtract the bottom limit. And I'm subbing in 0, and often in the cases things go to 0, but this time it doesn't. The sum of it goes to 0, but I'm still left with an a cubed. And I'm still left with a 1 minus a cubed. Alrighty, I'm outside of it. 1 over 3, lots of b minus a. Uh, 
I should have a look at where I'm heading here. Uh, it looks absolutely nothing like what I've got. So we just persist a little bit longer and then we'll check back. If I expand out the stuff here, I've got B cubed minus. Um, one minus B cubed is one cubed minus three B plus three B squared minus B cubed. That's a binomial expansion there. If you're not sure, I've covered it in earlier videos, but have a look at binomial expansions. And then we've got minus A cubed plus, because there's a double negative in that, one minus A all cubed. So one minus three A plus three A squared minus A cubed. Alrighty. Got two B cubed in here. Minus three B squared plus three B minus one. And then the A cubes and the other two are minus two A cubed. Plus 3a squared minus 3a plus 1. The ones cancel. I'm not happy for those ones to cancel given that the expression has a 1 in it. Mm, it looks a little bit dodgy. Okay. We don't have a B minus A in the denominator of the right-hand side that we're aiming for. Okay, the, there, there is no, there's no um, terms in the denominator. So the B minus A is a, must be a common factor of the stuff at the top. Um, what I'm going to use is the difference of two cubes, B cubed minus A cubed, is B minus A times B squared plus a b plus a squared okay, and you can check that by expanding so I'm gonna factor the b cubed minus a cubed term I've got that there and there so two lots of b minus a, b squared plus a b plus a squared. And then I'll just, should I leave the other stuff alone? Nope, I've got, I've got an a squared minus b squared there. Or minus three lots of b squared minus a squared, which is b minus a, b plus a. And then the last term is plus three lots of B minus A. Um, see what I'm doing? I'm factoring out the B minus A out of all those terms so that I can then go cancel, 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 cancel. Alrighty, minus a third. 2B squared plus 2AB plus 2A squared minus 3B minus 3A plus 3. What are we aiming for? We've got an a minus b squared thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that bit first. A minus b all squared. Okay. So minus one third. Two. I'm gonna do this b squared and a squared thing. B squared plus a squared. And actually, I can get the two ab all in one go. I've got b squared plus ab plus a squared all times 2. And that is the same as b plus a all squared. So that would be b squared plus a squared plus 2ab minus an ab. So b plus a all squared minus an ab. 
up. What else have I got? The aim for. Oh, I want A minus B all squared. Okay, well, that changes it a little bit. I'm fudging it now. Sometimes you work on the right hand side and, and just meet in the middle, that's also all good. Okay, what have I got there? If I got A minus B all squared, is A squared plus B squared, so I've got still positives, but I've got minus 2AB and I want it to be plus 2AB. But there's already a common factor of 2 out there, so if I go plus AB, is that going to give it to us? No, it needs to be plus 3AB. Okay, because that's going to give A squared plus B squared minus 2AB plus 3AB is plus AB all times by 2 is the stuff that we had in the previous line. Brilliant. Okay, and then we've got minus 3B minus 3A plus 3. So we've got minus 2 thirds times A minus B all squared. Minus A, B, because both those things have... Oh, no, no, what am I doing? Is that right? No, it's plus 6, A, B now. Oh, but then it's divided by 3 and divide, and times by minus 1. So it's minus 2AB. Gosh, there's lots of brackets going on here. And then there's minus 3 lots of B plus A. All times by negative 1 third. So it's plus and a 1. And then there's a 3 at the end, which becomes a minus 1 when we times it by minus one third. Oh, please tell me that's right. One minus a, two thirds of a minus b squared. Oh no. Okay, let's expand out that right hand side and let's just see this may be some miracle step, but if there isn't, it just tells me that I've actually made a mistake. So we've got, and if you've already found my mistake, good on you. Um, they happen <laughs> too frequently. Uh, 2AB minus B plus 2 thirds A squared minus 2AB minus 4 thirds AB plus 2 thirds B squared. This is what you'd do in an exam, I guess, if you didn't have the right answer. You'd be playing around with it, trying to get it to work. It looks too different to what I've got. I'm out by a minus in quite a lot of places. In fact, everywhere I'm out by a minus. Oh, okay, so it's just a minus missing. Where is the minus? Where did the minus one come from? Oh my goodness. There shouldn't be a minus there. Why is there a minus there? Looks, it looks like I'm just fudging the answer here, but there wasn't a minus. I don't know where that came from. Aha, we've got it. Oh, happy days. That video could have been a whole lot shorter if I hadn't stuffed up. Alrighty, the integration in that wasn't wasn't too bad if you didn't expand um, the collecting like terms and stuff pretty standard but the use of that difference of two cubes formula to factor out the b minus a and then cancel it uh, was where it started to get a bit sneaky alrighty second differential equation second problem a differential equation so we have 4x squared dy dx equals y squared minus 2xy, which is a um, differential equation unfamiliar to level 3 students. 
um, if you study maths at university, you'll do heaps of differential equations. And they say that you could use any valid method. However, a substitution would be useful and they give us a pretty random substitution to make. They say replace all the y's with some function which is u times by x. And they've pointed out that it's u of x. So u is not a constant, it's a function. And then they also suggest that we use partial fractions. Um, okay, so partial fractions are going to come into it as well. And then we've also got some condition that we need to use to find the plus c and then answer the question. Alrighty, so let's make the substitution to start. Let y of x, or, um, so y is some function of x, let's make it equal to u times x. Okay, so u and y are both functions of x. If we replace um, the right-hand side, it's pretty straightforward to replace. I just change the y's into ux all squared minus 2x times ux. Um, and that equals u squared x squared minus 2ux squared which is x squared times u squared minus 2u. So the right-hand side's pretty reasonable to replace. The left-hand side's a bit a bit different, though. I'll just if I can move that. Let's move that to the right. I'm going to need a bit more room. Um, because when we've got the left-hand side is 4x squared, we've got the dy dx in there. And so we actually need to replace that too, otherwise we'll end up with a differential equation with three variables in it. Um, the derivative of y with respect to x, we need the product rule for it. We can't just write it as u. Okay, if you're thinking dy dx just equals u, it doesn't work because u is a function. So we the product rule is um, diff the first one times the second one. So du dx times x plus uh, diff the second one, which is 1, times by the first function. Okay, so we're differing with respect to x, so the derivative of x is just 1, but the derivative of u is du dx. Alrighty, so we're replacing the dy dx bit. Okay, this substitution has helped because it's turned the differential equation we were given into something that's actually separable. Uh, there's an x squared on both sides, so um, what that means is that actually x equals 0 is a solution. Um, and we can cancel it, but we need to recognise x equals 0 is actually a solution. It's not the one we want, but if I make x equals 0 in the original problem, I'm going to get 0. Uh, 0, then I'll get 0 equals y squared, so that gives us y equals 0. So 0, 0 is a particular solution of the problem. A trivial solution. It's actually y equals 0 there as well. So we, we, we ignore that one because we're not interested in it. The question is asking us, um, given that f of 1 equals minus 6. So if the x value is 1, the y value is minus 6, it rules out that trivial solution. Okay, so we've got du dx x plus u is equal to u squared minus 2u. We can move the u to the other side. u squared minus 3u. We've turned the equation to a separable one. So level 3 um, NCA now. 1 over u squared minus 3u du equals 1 over x dx. So it's important you know how to do that. I'm dropping the x down there and taking the dx up. And I'm dropping all of this down the bottom left and dropping the du down. No, I'm leaving the du. Guess the key point in that is I'm treating this here as one whole factor and then dropping it down. Okay, integral on both sides. 
the right hand side integral of 1 over x is just log of the absolute value of x but this is where the partial fraction stuff comes in so using the hint in the problem tells us that we can rewrite uh, the rational function have I missed I think I might have missed something in the question here there's a 4x squared oh dear just checking my working as I'm going this time because after that last mirror of a problem um, we have a 4 that I've missed which is there and then it changes things a little bit I'll leave the 4 up there do I want to do that oh no because when you expand it it's going to be 4u so when we it's going to be minus 6 u okay and partial fractions would have been wrong there if I continued alrighty we're good to go again so um, what I often will do this on a, on a double page and I'll, I'll just go into the margin um, either on the right hand side of the page or just here as a little aside We've got 4 over u times u minus 6, which that apparently can be written as a over u plus b over u minus 6, where a and b are constants. To find those constants, I put the function, I put those fractions, sorry, back together. Therefore, the denominators are the same on the left and the right, which means the numerators need to be the same. So we've got 4 is equal to au minus 6a plus bu and you can either group these terms together so a plus b all times u minus 6a and go um, from that because the left hand side's a constant and the right hand side's a linear function a plus b must equal 0 and 4 must equal minus 6a and that enables you to find the a and the b or you can substitute two different values of u in. Like for example, here I could say uh, let u equals zero, because it's true for all values of u. If I make u equals zero, I get four equals negative six a. And if I make u is equal to, gosh, just pick another value, maybe u is equal to one, I'm gonna get four is equal to a plus b minus six a. And you can solve for a and b that way as well. So either choose two values of u um, and sub them in, or equate the coefficients of the linear term and the constant term. Alrighty, so if I do that, I get a is equal to minus two thirds and b is equal to positive two thirds. Back into the integral, instead of integrating this left hand side of 4 over u squared minus 6u, I'm integrating negative 2 over 3u plus 2 over 3u minus 6. Hence why a second page is often more useful. Okay, that one's going to be minus 2 thirds ln u plus 2 thirds ln u minus 6 and then on the right hand side it's going to be ln absolute value of x plus some constant c. Now often is the case when you want to uh, then solve this problem remember that we put u into the question so we want to take it back out again remember u was what was u? u was this bit here, uh, equal to y over x. Um, often is the case, we can change the c, the constant, into a log constant. And the other thing I want to do is actually factor out the two thirds. So I've got two thirds of um, two logs that are subtracted, which is the same as the log of a division. So I get that right hand side I've got log of x and then I can make the c like log k 
Okay, so change change this dude here to ln k. It's now it's still a constant, but it's a log constant. Meaning I can put the two terms on the right hand side together using log rules, and I'll get log of kx. Now I can bring the two thirds up to the top because that's another log rule. Okay, that, that two thirds can go up the top there, and then cancel the logs on both sides. So I end up getting u minus six all over u. Um, to the power of two thirds. Equals kx. And u is equal to y over x. Yeah, y over x. So got y over x minus six all over y over x. To the two thirds equals kx. So k is the only constant we need to find. Uh, and the question gave us some information to find it. It said, see if I can, no, absolute fail on that one. Let's actually take that up to the next page. Okay, we were given that uh, when x equals one, y was equal to negative 6. Okay, so I can sub that information in. Um, that's going to be, top thing's going to be negative 6 minus 6, negative 12. And the bottom thing is going to be minus 6. I wasn't too sure about the absolute value symbols actually. I've removed them. Okay, I just, I just actually removed them. But it's actually going to depend on what we get out of this expression. So that internal thing technically should have absolute value symbols still, but because I'm evaluating it's positive, I don't need them. Minus 12 over minus 6 is 2, so it's all good to actually remove them. If that had been a negative, I would have been in a bit of a problem at this point, would have had to go back and put them in. Um, and what was x was 1. Okay, so we've got 2 to the 2 thirds equals k, so k is equal to um, the cube root of 4. Alrighty, now with that information, the question asks us to find the function value when x equals 4. So x equals 4, y equals what? So we do the same thing again, but this time we don't have the y value. So y over 4 minus 6 all over y over 4 to the 2 thirds equals the cube root of 4 times x, which is 4. Um, I need to cube both sides and then square root them. So cubing Cubing both sides first. By the way, I'm doing this with all, all without my calculator because the calculator's in the next room and I can't be bothered pausing this. So I hope it's all good. Cube both sides. So I cube the right hand side, I get 4 and also get 64. 4 times 64, 256. Okay, and that's all that to the power of 1 over 3. No, what am I doing? It's the power of 2, cube rooted. Okay, and then the square root of 256. Uh, gosh, it's 16, I believe. Yep, 16, yep. So y over 4 minus 6 all over y over 4 equals plus or minus 16. Oh, are we the plus or are we the minus in this case? Hmm. That is a very good question. Because up, up at this step here, when I've got this implicit function for my um, this is the implicit solution. It's just it's it's not in a y equals format. 
um, if I wanted to find a y value, I'd have to rearrange it, and it needs to give me a y value that's negative. So if I come down to here where, um, and I consider Where am I looking at? Is it going to be the plus or the minus root? Let's go with both of them and let's see if it works. So if I go with 16 first, so I've got if negative 16, then y over 4 minus 6 over y over 4 equals 16. y over 4 minus 6 equals 16 times y over 4, so 4y times everything by 4. Um, negative 24 equals 15y. y equals negative 24 over 15. which turns out to be the answer that NZQA has. Um, if, oh, so that, that was if it's positive 16. Um, if negative 16, let's see what happens here. So I get y over 4 minus 6 equals negative 16 times. No. Be equal to over y over 4 equals negative 16 y over 4 y Okay, so is that possible? Is y equal to 24 over 17 possible? Um, yeah, I guess one way of doing it is to, is to look at the graph of it. In an exam situation, you, you've got your graphics calculated, you don't have Desmos, but I'm just going to pull up Desmos just to have a quick look of what this expression actually looks like. So remember we had this implicit equation here, So and I hadn't found the k at that point in time. So I've got y x minus 6, this is probably something I should have prepared earlier, my bad, to the power of 2 over 3, okay, all divided by y over x, oh no, the divided needs to be on in the inside of the, darn it, divided by Two thirds is not doing anything there at the moment, I don't think. Let's get some brackets around all that. Power up by. Doesn't look like it's in the power, so hopefully it's doing what it should. Oh, yep, no, it's good now. So clunky on an iPad, and that equals kx. Now, k we reckon was the cube root of 4, so I hope that works. Cube root of lattice power of I'll just put power of a third in cube root of four all times by x. Okay, here we go. What are we looking like? How do I make this bigger? Having a bit of display function error around close to the origin because the function's a strange one. And we were told in the problem x equals 1, y equals minus 6. Ah, so we're actually down, we're down on the bottom branch of this thing. So if I if I was to rearrange this, 
like I have, have options, right? But the first thing I need to do is cube it and square root it. So, I'll take this there. So it took ages to actually type out in the first place. I guess this comes back to your knowledge of equations and how, how you rearrange and solve them. Like, when you square root stuff or when you square stuff, you, you know, particularly when you square irrational equations and complex numbers, you always check your answers because sometimes you bring in solutions that like aren't actually solutions. So if I, if I cube both sides and then square root both sides, I've got like the plus and minus thing going on. So I've got two, actually got two graphs. One minus, if I cube the right hand side, I've got four, then square root it, I've got two, so two x to the power of three over two, and that should work. Okay, so see how that's that green branch in there so it was part of the answer that we had before but if I take the positive it's that little bit at the top left and also the bottom right and the bottom right is the one we want okay so when I when I take the square root I want the positive root and that's what I did there and I got the right value of y but if I had taken the other part of the function and taken the negative root I would have got a y value that corresponded to a different point on the graph at x equals 1. Now, x equals 1 has two values, two function values, depending on whether you've got the positive root or the negative root. Mm, turns out to be a trickier question than what was intended. Most people, I imagine, in an exam would just forget, you forget the negative root and just... Just look at plus 16. You know, when you square root 256, it's plus or minus, but hey, let's just forget it, go with the positive, and you get the right answer. Uh, but it turned out that the question was a little bit trickier than that. That is the right answer there, and that answer there is not. Alrighty, sorry for the errors, and thank you for persisting with me. I'll catch you in the next bit.